but what I was saying was, I think it's really important to have like the basic concepts of linear algebra. They come up more than you think everywhere, especially if you want to do any kind of machine learning or any kind of data science, that kind of stuff will come up. Um, I'll quickly answer this question from Mahan. Can you tell us uh, about how did you get your jobs, like the application to do this? Um, are you specifically asking about Amazon or just in kind of general? Both. Uh, okay. Well, um, so at Canon, it was a funny story. I so I was I was an international student, which um, I don't know if there's any international students here, but that creates a lot of challenges with what kind of jobs you can take and what kind of internships you can take. Um, and uh, I, I think I went to the career fair, which for me was a bit of a I don't know. I, I just would take some of the swag that people had and kind of be like, all right, this is kind of a waste of my time. Because uh, just because it was, I, I felt that our career fairs were very kind of CS focused, at least at the time. Um, and so I went to the career fair. Can, so folks from Canon were there. Canon generally has a pretty good relationship with Stony Brook, uh, just because of proximity or whatever. And um, like Canon regularly comes and talks in like business classes and things like that. But um, uh, Canon was there. I kind of had a chat with them. I, I gave them my resume and they happened to have a role open at the time. Uh, this was like, I want to say early in sort of senior year. Um, and some sort of weird analyst, financial analyst role or whatever. I wasn't particularly interested in it, but I, but I, I'm sure a lot of, I don't know if folks on here are like junior seniors, but around that time of your college career, sort of junior year, senior year, it starts to get pretty stressful. Your friends are kind of getting jobs and you're a little stressed about it. And it's all you ever think about. Um, so I was like, all right, whatever, I'll do it. Uh, and uh, so we had those conversations just from there. They happened to have a role and she was like, okay, let me, let's talk about it. They set up some calls. I did some interviewing and they were happy that after like two or three interviews, I would drive down to Melville and, and they, uh, for those interviews and they said, okay, we'll give you the job. And I was like, well, that's dope, but I don't graduate till like May or whatever it was. Uh, and because of my visa, I can't start before that. And they, they really needed someone to start in that role at the time. They're like, you can just do eight or 10 hours or whatever. And I said, no, like legally, I'm not really allowed to do that. So I kind of had to pass on that role, which worked out um, because, you know, around the time I was graduating, they opened up another role uh, called, uh, it was a business intelligence analyst role. It was much more interesting. It was essentially an internal consulting role. So Canon, um, I think most people know them as sort of a camera company, but their, their major businesses where they really make their money is, is um, sort of uh, healthcare imaging equipment, things like x-ray cameras and MRI machines and stuff like that. Like the insides of that, if you've ever had an x-ray, chances are it was like a Canon camera on the inside. Some other things as well, uh, you know, sort of imaging of blood samples or whatever uh, kind of, I guess, uh, BME type stuff. Uh, and also printers is where they make a lot of their money from because no one's really buying cameras anymore. Um, but yeah, so, so they had an internal consulting role, which kind of got to work with a lot of different teams. Um, and they already had my resume on file and I kind of, uh, you know, they reached out, I did an interview and then they did a whole bunch of interviews for that. I think it was like five or six rounds. It was, it was a pain in the ass uh, driving down to <laughs> Melville all the time. Um, and then they offered me that job. I think I, I, I probably had my last final on a Thursday and then I had Friday off. And then that following Monday, I started that job. So I had like no time off or anything in between. I was there for about 11 months. It was a very good goal, honestly. I, I was enjoying it. My team was great. Um, I was getting paid fine. Um, so I was happy. I just wanted to kind of get out of Long Island. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, that role was under OPT. Yeah, so that's another aspect to it. A, I wanted to get out of Long Island, and B, um, Canon doesn't sponsor kind of visas. This international students will know this, but I was under OPT, which is a very limited kind of three-year employment, and I wanted something a little bit more permanent. Uh, and these tech companies generally have the sort of, uh, you know, lawyers on board to kind of take care of that. So I, that was another reason. Uh, plus, I kind of wanted to move to the West Coast where it was a little bit warmer and all of that. Um, so I just kind of started interviewing again. I hit up, uh, I would just kind of apply to roles. It was very, uh, you know, I think I had a pretty solid resume. Uh, I did some really fun and good work at Canon. I got to work on some big things. Um, I interviewed and I think I had an offer from Facebook in Austin and Amazon in Seattle. 
and I uh, and some uh, a smaller company in in Colorado uh, called Dish, um, and I just wanted to move to Seattle, so I ended up taking this role. Uh, that's kind of the I don't know. I hope that answers that. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, okay, so so a couple of things. Let me just finish the, that thought earlier on, like coursework, right? So I was talking about linear algebra. I think the best courses that I took at Stony Brook, which I actually recommend to everyone, even if you're like a senior or whatever, go take these courses. Um, there was a course that started at that time. Um, I believe it's like physics 153 or something. It's like data analysis in physics or something uh, in Python or something like that. It was start, I don't know if there's any physics majors here, but um, it started by Joanna Kerlick, who's a, who's a great professor. She does some very exciting research on uh, neutrinos and uh, whatever. Uh, she started a course for physics majors because she realized that people who were taking these senior labs didn't know how to do any data analysis. I was part of the first iteration of that course and then I TA'd that course for two years, uh, like three semesters or something like that. Uh, it's a really, really good course. It introduces you to like actual things that are useful. Um, it won't be a lot of work. It's like pretty easy. If you know a little bit of Python, you will have a good time. It'll be chill. Even if you're like a CS major or something, go take it just because it'll be, it'll be very easy for you, uh, but uh, it'll give you sort of the right kind of libraries and tools. More so than that, I, I think you can learn the scikit-learn or whatever it is that you need to learn. But more so than that, she's a, uh, She's extremely technical. Physics professors have a very specific way of teaching things. And she, um, you know, like I, I think the, the course really only gets up to something like regression, but she teaches you regression inside out in a way that AMS courses fail to do for me, um, frankly. Um, and uh, that's one course I recommend to everyone just as a good starting point. If I recommend it if you're kind of in this space where you're like, well, I don't know where to start or what should I learn or whatever. It's just a good course to take it super easy. No like crazy homeworks or anything. Uh, she's a great professor too. Uh, the other course I recommend to everyone is, um, so again, I was part of the first iteration of this course. At the time it was called Probs and Stats for Data Science, Probability and Statistics for Data Science. It was offered as a CSC. Uh, uh, the, the name of the professor is Joanna. Here, look, I'm pretty sure that's how she spells it. She's Polish. Um, but yeah, at the time, there was a course being offered as a special topics, uh, CSC 390 or 391, taught by Anshul Gandhi, uh, who I understand is now a full-time, uh, he, he's got tenure and, and the course is a proper course. He generally teaches grad level courses, um, but I, at the time it was being offered to undergrads. I think he has a full-time undergrad course now that is offered regularly, something like that. I, I, Lolita, I think you're a CSC double major. You might know this better than I do. Um, phenomenal course. It was like way better than what you cover is essentially what you cover in like, I think these courses are AMS 310 and 11, which are like your basic problems and stats courses. It was just a way better version of that. Uh, and it was condensed into one semester. Plus for me, I took a lot of courses, right? I had a double major, uh, I had a minor, and then I almost finished another minor. And across all of the courses I took at Stony Brook, it was by far the best dot course. Anshul Gandhi was my favorite professor. Uh, anything he teaches, just go and take it. Uh, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal professor. Really, really good at kind of synthesizing information, super clear in what he's saying, makes classes fun, uh, even though the material was frankly pretty, pretty challenging at the time. Um, I highly recommend those two courses to anyone. They're, they're, uh, Anshul Gandhi specifically has a very, Joanna's teaching you from a sort of a research perspective, how do you apply these things to research, which is something you do in industry. But Anshul Gandhi is really coming from this place of, uh, if you look at his, people who work on his lab, they all go on to work at Google, Amazon, just for really good roles. Uh, because he's teaching you from that mindset of, you know, what you actually need to do to go out and apply this stuff. Um, and then the CSE department every now and then offers some, some good sort of special topics courses. 